Hey everyone, Tim Schofield here. And Apple just announced their new iOS 14 update coming to iPhone soon, and they also released a beta for it. And I have that installed on my iPhone 11 Pro Max. They also announced device compatibility with this update, and believe it or not, the iPhone 6S is still going to be getting iOS 14. So a phone released back in 2015 is still getting software support from Apple Hats off to you, Apple, great job. Now I wanna dive into a lot of the new features coming to iOS 14, demonstrate them for you. There's even a new incoming call screen, which is much needed for sure. And even tapping the back of the phone adds some functionality. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into iOS 14. Let's get started. Also a quick side note, I will be doing a video on Android 11 and their beta, maybe even comparing iOS 14 and Android 11. So stay tuned for those. Be sure to click that subscribe button so you're notified. To begin, let's jump into settings and you'll see iOS 14, this is the beta. Keep in mind that there might be more features added later on and maybe some will be removed, who knows? So a big change you'll notice, first of all, widgets can be added on the home screen. Here is one of them where you can actually scroll through different ones and stack them on top of each other. Kind of a nice feature. Uh, also, if you go all the way to the left, the revamp widget screen is there. You'll see it's showing uh, some news, some weather, uh, percentage, you know, some stocks, whatever you have, you can really customize it to your liking. Let's say I'm trying to add a widget, press and hold on that home screen, hit the plus in the upper left-hand corner, and it gives you some suggestions. So there's a ton of different ones that you can have. I was using Smart Stack where it scrolled through, but you know, screen time, stocks, weather. So if we do wanna add a weather one, there's a different sizes. So let's say we want a really big weather widget, we could just put that to the top there, go ahead and hit done. It'll load all our information up once it actually uh, gets it going. And there you have it, a very large widget on your home screen. Again, nothing new. This has been around on Android for a long period of time, but it's useful. So it's nice that iOS was like, okay, let's go back and actually take some widgets and put them on the home screens. And you also do have a new app drawer at the end of all of your pages. So you don't have to have a million pages for all of your apps. It will automatically categorize them into different folders so let's say productivity, you can click on this and it will show you all of your productivity apps. Uh, you can actually click on them. So if I wanna go to Safari, I can just click to it so I don't actually need to tap and tap again. These ones that are highlighted are ones I can just click on. Not only are they categorized, they are in alphabetical order. So you can actually pull down once you're at the top and it will bring up your entire app list alphabetized uh, up and down. You can quickly swap on this right bar here like so. So essentially just an app drawer for you, really nice and useful. And finally they have added it. Or of course you can just tap the search up towards the top, but I like just swiping down. Uh, so finally iOS has realized that app drawers are just better than having a million screens and even just categorizing them by folders. I also noticed if you wanted to move a group of apps to a different screen without putting them in a folder, you can edit the home screen, press on an app, and then go ahead and just tap other apps you want to group with it. And this isn't creating a folder. This is just saying, hey, let's move all of these 10, nine, 10 apps to a different page. So you can move it to a different page, or if you wanna actually fully remove them, you can bring it over to the app library, drop them in, and they are no longer on that home screen. Also in settings, if you go into home screen with new app downloads, you can have it go into the app library only or add it to the home screen. And then with notification badges, you can customize it showing those badges in the app library. Honestly, a very small change, but one of my favorite features added to iOS 14 is that incoming call screen. It now takes up a very small sliver of the top of your display where you can continue what you're doing on the screen. So it doesn't take up your entire display. You can swipe up to dismiss it and then even go back into the call if you decide, eh, maybe I do wanna answer iOS 14 has also finally added picture and picture mode. So if you are watching a video, maybe you're on a FaceTime call, it will actually show up in a smaller window and you can have it start it automatically. Now, one thing I noticed is that while playing a video and you go home, it won't actually pop out the video. You have to be in the full screen player for it to actually pop out, but it does look really good. It does, uh, it is something you can move around. You can also resize with a pinch, which I'm a big fan of because you could take up, you know, the whole bottom space of your phone. So nice addition from Apple. Of course, again, something we've already seen on Android, but again, something that is necessary to have on phones that makes sense to take from them. Like in all software versions, some new wallpapers have shown up. So in stills, there are a few different ones. You'll see I just have the main one added right now. I can actually link to those in the description if you're interested in downloading them. 
Siri has finally gotten an update as well. Instead of taking up the entire screen, pops up right down towards the bottom and listens to you, uh, which will not overtake if you are in an app or anything like that. What's the weather like today? And then it will throw up cards towards the top with the answers. If you tap again, what's the tallest building in Chicago? And you'll see it will actually go ahead and search the web for some of the answers. So it will get updated results and it does seem to be a little bit better after some initial testing, but kind of cool how it just throws a card up towards the top. And if you click on search the web, it'll open up the browser for more info. The next new feature in iOS 14 is honestly pretty crazy. I could see a ton of different use cases for it. They didn't even talk about it during the keynote, but let's check it out. So jumping into settings, go into accessibility and then touch and scroll all the way down and it's there right at the bottom. It is called back tap. Basically just double tapping or triple tapping the back of your phone for different actions. So right now I have a double tap set for notification center. So if I go one, two, it's a little bit slow and delayed. Sometimes it doesn't work. It's still a little buggy. So if I go one, two, there it is. It brings down that notification center without having to even touch the screen, which can be very useful. And then I have triple tap for screenshots. So if I go one, two, three, boom, it takes a screenshot right away. And then of course, there are a bunch of different settings you can add and not just the ones that I'm showing off. So if you want volume up, you want search, Siri, uh, shake, uh, app switch or whatever you want, you can go in through accessibility settings, there's scroll gestures even. Uh, so there's a ton of different use cases you can create with those back taps. Apple's also getting into translation with a new Translate app. It seems very basic to start. I'm sure they'll push out updates going forward. Uh, basically just select the language up towards the top. So if I say you can enter text so you can type what you want to translate or say, hello, how are you doing today? And it'll just go ahead and translate in that into your selected language. There are a lot of different languages and you can download them. So this is all on device translation. Similar to your webcam on your laptop, when the camera is being accessed by an app, you'll notice a small light show up on the screen. This one is green for that camera and even the microphone as well. So if I start recording an audio recording, you'll notice up at the top a little orange dot. So it is different based on if you're using the microphone or the camera. And speaking of taking pictures, apparently taking them got faster. So you can go ahead and quickly tap, take shots much quicker, and even portrait mode shots will be processed faster. You can also now finally set default apps for the browser and email. So if I go ahead and click on a link at the bottom, ask me which app to use every time, turn that off, select the browser you wanna use, and then even email as well. Just go ahead and select the specific email app you wanna use and uncheck the box. In the messaging app, you can now pin conversations to the top, whether they're group chats, single messages, and then if you just tap on it, it will go into your standard messaging thread. Now keep in mind, you can actually unpin them very easily, just press and hold, and and it will bring up the option to unpin. Now, I don't have iMessage enabled right now, but there are now mentions and inline replies. So nice, useful features for group chats. On iOS 14, there's a new feature called App Clips where you can go ahead and scan a QR code, maybe tap an M NFC tag and use an app without actually having to download it. So maybe you don't have an app, you don't have to wait for it to actually download to use it if you need to rent a scooter or maybe make an order. And speaking of NFC, Apple demonstrated unlocking your car with your phone, just tapping the handle on the car and it will unlock it. Pretty useful, again, maybe you might struggle if your battery dies on your phone or if you lose it. Apple Maps in general got a lot of updates, but one big one was that biking directions and I can't seem to get them to work right now but you will see it is now a tab in Apple Maps. And overall, those are all the big changes coming to iOS 14. There's a lot more minor ones, which I will link to uh, Apple's website below if you wanna check out some of the other smaller changes to iOS 14. So drop a comment, let me know if there's anything you think I should have shown off, anything like that, but more content to come on iOS 14. So be sure you click that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to give it a thumbs up. And as always guys, thank you for watching.